Welcome to the CXR channel, our premier podcast for talent acquisition and talent management. Listen in as the CXR community discusses a wide range of topics focused on attracting, engaging, and retaining the best talent. We're glad you're here. Everybody, welcome to another edition of the CXR podcast. Uh, in this instance, we are doing a recap uh, of the, the meeting that we just wrapped. It was our second analytics meeting uh, that we have done this year, in the year of 2021. Uh, and I've got with me some fantastic folks who were just on the, the call with us, who are just uh, participating, and they're here to sort of share any big takeaways or giant moments. Uh, we have, uh, and I'll just, if, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call you out, and then I'm going to ask that you give us the escalator pitch of who you are. So uh, your name and your organization and in, in a sentence or two, what you do within that firm or that, that entity. So we'll start uh, at the top of the screen, Melissa Mendoza at Gallo. Hi, everyone. Yes, Melissa Mendoza from e j Gallo Winery. I'm a senior manager of recruitment operations and people analytics. Um, so long title there, but um, lots of stuff. Uh, I've been I've been at Gallo for 13 years now, um, and my team really focuses on improving candidate experience, streamlining our processes, all of our training and assimilation, um, and all of our HR data. I love it. That's a lot. All right, uh, Pooja Udeshi. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Pooja Udeshi. I work for Church and Dwight, and um, I just joined about nine or ten months ago. So I'm I'm into the role now, but just kind of learning the different or like the different things that organization takes care of. I'm the talent acquisition representative, so I support the TA team, um, the recruiters, and then I also work on the data analytics side and. It's, we're really focusing heavy on data analytics this year. So I've just been trying to build dashboards and right now I'm kind of doing it more manually. So that's why I joined some of these events to just kind of see, you know, the bigger picture and how we can make things a lot easier going forward. Um, but yeah, just learning a lot and trying to just learn a lot more about data analytics because it's such a growing factor. And I just graduated in last May. So I'm relatively new to um, the workforce. So just trying to take in a lot of knowledge. Well, welcome. Uh, it's a way to break into the field. You had quite a few uh, heavy hitters on the call today, so it was great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good stuff, Pooja. Thank you. Uh, Colleen mm -hmm. Arthur. Hi, yes, this is Colleen Arthur, and I work with Davida. Um, I'm a senior director in our recruiting function, and I support our recruiting operations, as well as our employee branding and other um, strategy and special projects. And one of those initiatives that we're working on right now is looking at all the different ways that we are measuring our recruiting function and reporting out to our business partners. And so I was really interested to see what's working out there for others and, and what we could take back to Davida. Wonderful. Well, I am really grateful for the three of you for jumping on the podcast with us. Uh, so I'll, let me just sort of the lay of the land uh, from our meeting today. Uh, we did some fun icebreakers. We used a brand new tool uh, for collaboration and brainstorming. Uh, and we went through an exercise. Well, first off, we, we got to go through a live dashboard with Lockheed Martin, which was really, really interesting, uh, of internal uh, mobility. That was some of the data that they shared uh, on the screen with us. So it's fascinating to see that work. Uh, and then we went in and did some brainstorming or reverse brainstorming using a new tool uh, and some ideation there with regards to the biggest challenges we have within talent analytics or people data. So with that sort of an overview of what we went through, uh, and we'll just go backwards, Colleen. Was there any big takeaway for you today? Um, yeah, so one of my big takeaways really was the marriage between people behavior and systems and how important it is to, to acknowledge people behavior as you're setting up a system, uh, thinking about the right level of flexibility, um, but then making sure that your system's set up to capture data accurately and be able to report out on it accurately. So I think that that marriage of um, human behavior and system uh, was, was one of my key takeaways. Yeah, I think people really get in the way of good data about that. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> but unfortunately, fortunately or unfortunately, we, we need the people. That's how that's how we get it done, right? I wonder how many developers wish users didn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Colleen, we talked about that um, a lot too in my groups and just how important it is to actually show the recruiters the impact of their behaviors on the data, right? And what we found at Gallo is the more that you get them accustomed to using the dashboards and the data, they feel their own pain, right? They feel the pain of their behaviors in the system. Them. So those are just a little, a couple little tips and tricks to help you there. But um, yeah, definitely feel your pain. 
Love it. Yeah. Thanks, Melissa. So Melissa, did you did you also have a, sort of a similar or different aha moment today? Was there a big takeaway for you? Yeah, a couple of things. First of all, I, I just think every time I join um, specifically the analytics sessions um, with you guys, I just, it's so nice to feel not alone in the world and we're all struggling with the same sort of um, challenges. So um, that's really nice. But no, I, I really enjoyed the, the Lockheed presentation. I got some good sort of um, uh, changes that I think will we will likely make to our dashboards. One of them that I really liked um, that Lockheed focuses on um, the timing, uh, their whole, like the top part of their scorecard showed the timing, but only for candidates that were hired. Um, and I thought that was an interesting way to sort of, you know, shuffle out the noise of all the messy um, other data and really focus on if a manager is asking, right, or leadership's asking, how long is it taking for my people to start? Truly, you're really only looking at the people you're hiring. So I think that might be an adjustment that we take away, um, or at least look at the differences there. Um, and then I loved their idea of creating some competition within business units. So um, I think that could work really well, right? Marketing and finance sort of creating some competition with the hiring teams, not necessarily the recruiters to say, how quick can you help us move for your org? So um, those were a couple of really um, interesting things that I thought I would um, take back. Great, great. And uh, Pooja, how about you? Was there a big yeah. change? You um, or so I really enjoyed um, watching Masha's dashboard as well because currently what I do is we have Workday. So what I do is I pull the reports from Workday and then I use Power BI. So I feed the data into Power BI, but it's not like that live version that you know anyone that has access to it can just go in and refresh. Um, so it's it's a lot of you know manual work. If someone does want to see updated data, I have to kind of recreate that for the the next week. So it was really cool to see that there are different you know softwares that you could use like to explore, we could explore Tableau and have those filter options where anyone can kind of just go through and see what they want to look at, uh, filter by functions. Because right now when I create them, I create um, scorecards for each different function. So mm -hmm. it'd be cool to just have the data all together bucketed and they could just filter out based off of what function that they're, they're interested in. So it was really cool to just see that there is a way to make it a lot easier um, and just have to explore the different options. Yeah, well, it's a good call out. I think um, what I also thought interesting, I think a little bit of it resonates in what each of you have said. Th there was a comment or a little bit of discussion at the end around um, when we go to build reports or dashboards or these reporting or analytics environments, what questions are we answering? And for me, I, that really resonated because and I, I imagine as Church and Dwight, who's as you guys are beginning to build these reports and dashboards, I imagine that that's something you're going to have to be incredibly conscious of because if you're building reports for reporting sake or mm -hmm. if you're building a report because you think that's what should go in there and it's not actually helping to address any of the pain points or it's not right. actually helping to identify any of the bottlenecks or the challenges it's all for nothing yeah i thought that was a pretty powerful piece and i loved the the comment that she made today where it was like well i asked the question and nobody nobody knows what question they want to they want to ask of the business unit or the business doesn't really know what they want to ask but they know all their pain so i have to just kind of read between the lines yeah, I do remember I joined a um, data analytics event earlier, like last year, um, and someone shared a dashboard. And instead of just having like a title, they had a question that the dashboard was answering. And I thought that was really interesting because it was right as a title. It was like, I don't remember the specific question, but I thought that was a, a unique way of, you know, organizing the dashboard because it wasn't just like a title, like open requisitions. It was just like, what are we looking at and what this dashboard is going to show you? I love that. A story. It's supposed yeah, to tell a story. Yeah. Okay, so we're, we're going to wrap with, in just a minute, we're going to wrap, but I have one question. We did some, it was a very different style of meeting today. We were learning as we went, obviously, as facilitators, but also as participants, very interactive, very different, this new platform. What did you think of it? The brainstorming exercise, was it helpful? Did it slow you down? Did you think it was great? Was it the worst? I personally liked it because I feel like with a bigger group, um, a lot of people tend to go to the chat option to share their, like, um, you know, their answers, but to have that um, you know, the post-it notes and just have everyone go into it and just add their ideas. I think it really increases collaboration rather than just someone kind of just listening in or reading the chat. Yeah, I've used a similar um, tool called Mural for posties and sharing. Um, and I think Miro worked very similar. It was awesome. Um, but I really liked the reverse brainstorm. 
Um, I think that that works well um, or seems like it would work well in groups where maybe they're not comfortable brainstorming or they don't do it all the time, right? Um, so something I will certainly take back, but I loved the reverse brainstorm facilitation. Very cool. Yeah, I, I agree with, with those comments. I thought the exercise was really was really a great way to kind of get to the root of some of the problems and some solutions. I have to admit, I had a little bit of a learning curve when we first started using the tool, but it was pretty quick to get used to once I found where my cursor was versus where all the other cursors were. Um, so once I got used to it, I, I thought it was a really effective tool to, to lead the conversation. Good stuff. All right. Well, maybe we'll try it again. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us. I look forward to seeing you online in the CXR community at CXR.works until the next meeting. And hopefully we'll see you on the next book club. We're excited about that. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Thank Thanks. Bye. Thanks for listening to the CXR channel. Please subscribe to CXR on your favorite podcast resource and leave us a review while you're at it. Learn more about CXR at our website, cxr.works, facebook.com and twitter.com slash career crossroads and on Instagram at career X roads. We'll catch you next time.